Hey everybody, welcome to Speedy's Garage. We've got a lot to talk about today, so we're just gonna jump right into it. I've been running a uh, track setup on Go Man Go here, and it's very similar to what I ran on Orange Crush for several years. It's a Weld 17 by 10 wheel with a Hoosier Slick in a uh, 28 by 10 tire. And the slicks I used on Orange Crush because it was a manual six-speed car, I needed all that flex of the sidewall to take some of that shock load out of the driveline. With an automatic, I don't think you need as much because you have the torque converter that will take some of that shock load out of the driveline. So, the slicks had prevented me from running in some street car classes I wanted to run in last season. I wasn't able to use them, so I had to stick with my street tire setup, which is a uh, Nitto 555R in a 305 45 20 on some factory reproduction uh, 20 by 10 and a half wheels. Not optimal for the track, I mean, they work pretty good, but the um, 17 inch wheel will give you more sidewall and give you more cushy you know, flex when you launch. And so we're gonna go to a Mickey Thompson E3 Street R to compare to how the slicks have done. Now those slicks, like I say, they lasted seven seasons, I think. They've got 100, at least 100, maybe 150 passes on them. Now when I go to the track, I usually don't just hot lap, hot lap, hot lap, hot lap. If you go to the track, and my car would run four or five passes and I start getting an average that's pretty close or the times end up being pretty close, I figure that's good enough to dial it in. And then I just race. And uh, so I'd usually get four to five test passes in then maybe four or five race passes in. And that was enough for me. Uh, now, if I go to a private track rental, I might get 20 passes in, but after a while, the car just kind of starts to run what it runs and, and you are where you are. So I didn't just go to the track and just beat on it over and over and over uh, for no reason. So keep that in mind, that's why the, the tires lasted me so long on the front i'm running a race master four and a half by 28 by 18 on these dark star i think they're 18 by 5 or 18 by four and a half wheels 18 by 5 i'm pretty sure and this setup weighs uh, 38 pounds total for one tire and one wheel and this setup weighed 42 pounds total for one tire and one wheel but the slicks have seen better days you can see we're starting to get some weirdness here where it's starting to ball up and I think that tells me I'm getting into a different compound of the rubber once you've gone past the good stuff. You can see these little marks on the tires that indicate when you've kind of, they're kind of like the wear marks, wear indicators, and when you get those flush, the tire's worn out, and so those are flush, other tires the same way. So they're ready for replacement, and I'm hoping we'll get some better 60 foots from our ET Street R's. Now my average 60 foot with these tires uh, has been around 1.58 if you added them all up anywhere from 1.62. Sometimes I'd get a 1.51, that's the best I ever got. And that was if the track had just been prepped. I'm hoping to get into the 1.4s with the Mickey Thompson ET Street R's. We'll see when we get to the track with them. I need to kind of do some research and find out about the burnout and all of that. Again, these were a bias ply tire, so I'm curious about the weight difference. The Mickey Thompson's will be a radial, so that means they'll be DOT approved and I can use them in those street classes I want to run in. Um, reports online say that they're an actual, uh, actually a very, very good tire, but we're going to talk to our friends up here at Discount Tire and see what they have to say as well. So with all of that covered, we've got to get the tires loaded up in Old Faithful and get over to the shop and swap over. Now we're back at Discount Tire with my buddy Chandler. He always takes, always takes care of me down here. So as I described at the shop, we're going to go from the bias ply slick to the drag radial Mickey Thompson ET Street R. So Chandler, to start, um, kind of tell us about this tire a little bit. It's good for street and strip, I assume, because it's pretty soft. Yeah. You're probably not gonna get a ton of mileage out of it, so it's mainly for the strip, but I'm assuming they built this tire so that they could have something that they could use on the uh, street classes that are getting pretty popular. Yeah, for sure. So the biggest reason you can use this uh, tire on the street versus just the track is it's got these little grooves. It doesn't have very much of them, but that actually makes the tire DOT legal. Uh, so you can run it if you're having to drive your car to the track or when you're doing street street type races like you were saying. So obviously you have a lot of contact pads with the rubber here, so it's going to be nice and sticky for you. Nice. We went with a 305 45 17, and that should get it pretty close to what the Mickey Thompson 28 by 10 slip was. We'll show you a measurement of the two here in a second. Um, my next question is, these are bias ply, mm -hmm. and I have some, I've never done it myself, but I've had some friends try to run a slick like that 
on their car with the regular front tires on it, which are radials. And they, they kind of describe it as getting a little, it wants to walk around a little bit when it gets to the big end of the track. You got any, you know, tell us about the cords and how they run on a bias ply versus a radial, then maybe we can describe why that might occur. Yeah, so from sidewall to sidewall on a radial tire, your belts are going to run directly horizontally across the tire. Okay. And so that's going to help keep like your contact patch the same and they don't follow the road as much. With a bias ply, if you know, on like old school vehicles, this is the only tires they used to make. And like Coker for your old school restorations, they still make them, but they're kind of zigzagged across in a cross pattern. Right. So it actually follows the path of the road as opposed to creating the turn. So. I'd imagine if it's on the rear of a car, more than likely if your front tires are tracking one way and then the rear's trying to follow the way the pavement's grooved, it, it could cause something. That might, that might make some sense, but you know, um, my fronts are skinnies and they are a bias ply and I've never heard of anybody saying that that was a problem. So it must be something with the way it pushes the car and it, like you're saying, it's following the track yeah. of the front tire. We'll go with that. If anybody knows different, leave me a comment below and, and tell us why a bias ply causes the cars to get a little uneven at the top end of the track. We're gonna get these mounted up and see how they do. So the Hoosier Slick on this 10 inch wheel, the tread width is right at 10 inches. You can see that there. However, with the bulge, they measure about 11 and a quarter, almost 11 and a half. So we're gonna compare that to the Mickey Thompson ET Street R once we get them mounted. So just the Mickey Thompson ED Street R with no wheel in a 305 45 17 weighed right at 30 pounds. A weld 28 by 10 wheel weighs 20.5 pounds all by itself. And a Hoosier Slick weighs 18 pounds. So there's the Mickey Thompson mounted to the weld wheel. This is a uh, 305 45 17, as I mentioned before, 51 pounds. So about uh, nine pounds heavier than the previous setup. And our tread width looks to be 10 and a half to 11 inches. So just a tick wider now these are aired up to 35 pounds to get the bead seated. That may widen up just a little bit when we drop the air pressure, but right about 10 and a half or 11 inches. And then the entire width of the tire is about 11 and three quarters. So almost the exact same as we had before, but now we're gonna test fit to make sure we don't have any surprises at the track. And they use a little bit of grease to make the tire easier to mount on the wheel. So when I get home after having new tires mounted up, I always take a rag and wipe that out because it'll kind of grow and splatter out on the outside of the tire and just looks nasty. Doesn't take but just about 30 seconds to wipe it up. So clean that up and we're gonna do a test fit. Super close, but it's not rubbing. We're gonna lower the car down now and see. We lowered the car down, and the tight spot is typically on the passenger side, right about here, behind the tire. There's a rib back there, and it's close, but I would say we easily have a quarter of an inch. And a quarter of an inch is a mile in this case, so we should be good to go. These tires are radials. We don't have to worry about them expanding or anything under speed. I don't feel it even close anywhere else. Right at the bottom maybe, but that bends back, no problem. The splash shield will bend back just a little bit. Get out of the way there. I'm gonna call that success. We got our 305-45-17s mounted up. We're ready to hit the track. We got our new tile and wheel combination set up. So the Hoosiers weighed 42 pounds on the wheel. So the previous complete setup for one tire and wheel was 42 pounds. The new ones are 51 pounds, so a nine pound difference. I'm hopeful that those radials will do a good job for us. Be sure to stay tuned. Subscribe if you haven't already and click the bell so you get notified of future content because we're going to the track with these very soon and I'm gonna post all the results up. I just tested the slicks uh, a couple of weeks ago. So we'll have recent testing 
on the slicks versus the drag radials and we'll know how they did. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Be sure to hit subscribe like I said, click the bell, check us out on Instagram, it's at speedies underscore garage as well as our website www.speediesgarage.net and hopefully I'll see you out there.